Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. When God gave this command to Adam and Eve, the Lord had in his mind a certain kingdom that he wants to make. God gave mankind dominion over the whole world. As mankind had dominion over the whole world, everything that's going on in our world, uh, excuse me, I made a mess right here, gave him dominion over the plants, the trees, the vegetation, the animals, the animals, and then he also gave them uh, dominion over the fish of the sea, right? So then, the Lord, he actually gave them dominion over everything. Not only that, the Lord, he also gave them... Yeah, this is my artwork. There we go. Okay, but anyway, so... Amen, there we go, okay. So, when God gave mankind dominion over everything in life, Satan, he was watching, obviously. And Satan, when he saw how God gave rulership to mankind upon the earth... What do you think Satan wants to do? Satan, what he wants to do is take it for himself. And what he wants, let's see how Satan twists everything around with God, which is extremely interesting. First of all, notice right here, verse 27, so God created man in his what? Own image. So Satan, what he wants to do is obviously where you see what? Men... And then, you know, you see this in restroom signs, right? Men and woman. So Satan, he wants to ruin this first by creating this thing called sexual fluidity. And then because of that, you don't know which part of the rainbow that you're in because you're, sexual, you're sexually fluid. So then comes out pedophilia, homosexuality, bisexual, lesbian, and all this kind of gross stuff. So he wanted to create, uh, he wanted to corrupt God's image. Not only that, Satan, he wants his own image. So look at Genesis chapter 6. But keep your hand at Genesis 1. Look at Genesis chapter 6. Now he wants his own image. Okay, notice that the Bible says that at verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Verse 4, look at the result. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. There goes your giants, what they call the Nephilim, mutants, aliens, etc. Why? Because look back at Genesis 1, verse 28. God gave them a command that to combine together and repopulate the world. Satan, he wants his own kingdom. So his own paradise right here is that this is corrupted. That's his ideal world. Now think about it. When does Satan have his own world? It's at the tribulation. So the new world order, his kingdom. So let's picture how that's going to look like then. One thing is that he's definitely going to have this sexual fluidity garbage successful. And everyone's going to be fornicating, pedophilia, homosexuality, all this thing rampant. That's one. Number two, he's going to have these Nephilim come alive, these mutants and these monsters come out alive again. So then he has these mutants and these monsters coming out. That's a monster. <laughs> That's a monster. So then he'll have these and then the giants in the earth in those days. <laughs> so then he'll have the Nephilim walking around. 
So he has those. Here's another thing. What, is he, what else is he going to have? What you're going to notice is that God gave mankind the kingdom, right? Yeah. So what he wants is he wants his own kingdom. Look at Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah 14. You know what's interesting about God's kingdom and God's throne as we talk about God? He makes up a throne, and surrounding this throne, you see four cherubims surrounding the throne. And what they are is lion, man, eagle, and calf right here. There we go. And then God, he makes up a triune, right? So he is a trinity himself. And God, as he lives up in heaven, what you got to understand is this, is that this is known where God's world is in a triangle shape. Yeah. A triangle shape. What's very interesting is that scientists, they'll use triangles to measure the universe, actually. And I've given you a teaching about uh, the shape of the universe, so I'm not going to really get into that. But our universe, God's kingdom, his throne, is all in a triangular shape. That's why he calls it Mount Zion. Mountains are like that triangular shape, right? So his heaven is known as Mount Zion. Now, you'll notice right here that Isaiah chapter 14, Satan, he wants to imitate that kingdom. Verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon, notice right here, the mount of the congregation, something triangular. In the what? Sides of the north. The north has sides, something triangular. So you'll notice right here that Satan, he wants to imitate how God builds his kingdom as a triangular shape. Now, if that's the case right here, that's the reason why that in his New World Order kingdom and what you've seen, remnants of it, are these pyramids. And you'll see them everywhere in South America, in Asia. There, were even, there was even a science group that was going down where the Bermuda Triangle is, where all that weird activity was at, where they found these pyramid shapes, which was very interesting, actually. Why? Because Satan wants to revive his kingdom. Now... If you read the book of Jeremiah, what is very interesting is this. Yeah. If you read the book of Jeremiah, God talks about these nations that he will judge in the end times, and they're all talked about in these four to five chapters before God continues the story of Jeremiah. He talks about the first one is Egypt, their judgment at the book of Jeremiah. Then he talks about the Muslim nations, actually, which includes... Syria, and then the Transjordan area, and Palestine's actually. So the Muslim nations, and then he talks about Babylon. Why? So Satan, he'll have to have Babylon. Who is Babylon? Well, God has his bride and his church. So Satan obviously wants to imitate that, and that is the Roman Catholic Church. Kind of looks like Washington, D.C., but anyway, food for thought, you know. <laughs> but anyways, you'll notice right here that Satan, he wants his own bride, his own church as well. That's what we're going to see. He corrupt God's image. He has his own bride, Satan's church. He also has his own kingdom. He, let's see right here. Another thing concerning about Satan is that there are these four cherubims I mentioned before to you, right? But Satan, who is the fifth cherub, he is very interestingly likened to all these four things. Now, there's a, a statement out there which is pretty interesting that the reason why there are these four chairs, man, lion, eagle, oh, yeah. and calf, 
is that it's assimilated with like God, uh, with the account of Jesus Christ at the four Gospels. It's a representation of Jesus Christ. So that's perhaps the reason why these four cherubims surround God, because it represents God as a king, lion, and then as a servant, which is the ox and the calf, or as a man, uh, which is the book of Mark. Mark, Jesus is a servant. And Matthew, he's known as king. The book of Luke, Jesus is known as to be a man. So there's your cherubim as a man. And then at the book of John, he is known to be as deity. And that's what the eagle would represent right there, which is pretty interesting. But Satan himself would take all four, because if you look at the Bible, he is known as a roaring lion. He is known at, as, a, as the birds at the parable of Jesus Christ. He is also known to be as a man. The Bible says he's an angel of light, and angels are men. And then you'll notice that if you look at the book of Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 10, and Ezekiel 28, he is undoubtedly the ox. How about that? So Satan will carry these things from God as well. Not only that, so he is his own throne. God is his own trinity. Satan wants to have his own trinity. You have the Antichrist over here. Well, since I'm drawing what Satan's world would look like, he will have the man of sin, the Antichrist. And then he'll have the one who will make way for him, the false prophet. And then the dragon himself. The Bible says that he will be coming down. Here you have God the Father, and then you have God the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit that Satan imitates. Because the Holy Spirit makes way for Jesus Christ. He's the one that exalts Jesus Christ. The Antichrist represents, he's known as son of perdition, like Jesus Christ being known as the son of the Father. And that's being Satan himself, who's officially the father, the daddy of it. So you'll notice right here that Satan will have his own trinity. What's also interesting right over here, how Satan's minions, he will have his ten kings. When he has these ten kings, it is shown at Daniel chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 17. These ten kings, there are no doubt that these are some sort of Nephilim fallen angel beings, whoever they are. So what is very interesting is that he has his own kingdom here where he has the fallen angels. God has his own angels, right? Satan will have his own angels. God has his own spirit, right? Clean spirit. Satan will have his unclean spirit, devils, which are different from fallen angels, unclean spirits. So then he has his fallen angels, his devils, and then he has his Nephilim, and then he'll have these ten kings roaming about. And these ten kings, which is very interesting about these people, is that if you are to add this, plus this, plus this, and plus this, that equals 13, and then it goes on where you kind of wonder about uh, the 13 families of the bloodline of the Illuminati, which is pretty interesting right here. So it may be so, maybe so, I don't know. I'm not saying that I do know, but it may be so. What is also uh, uh, interesting concerning about his New World Order system, he's also going to have, if you look at the book of Revelation, he will also have these four specific angels. God has his own specific angels, the Bible says. He has Michael, the archangel, and then he has Gabriel. Satan, he has the four loosed out of the river Euphrates, the Bible talks about. And these four angels loosed out of Tartarus. And these will unleash hell on earth. Which also reminds you of the other people who unleash hell on earth, the four horsemen. The four horsemen would represent the entities of evil because it includes death and hell and then famine. 
What is interesting, Satan is known to be as the king or the prince or the power over death. And Jesus had to conquer that, the book of Hebrews, the Bible says. Here are the four entities of evil itself that Jesus Christ will put down, 1 Corinthians 15. The last enemy that shall be defeated is death. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. The four evil entities, and then you got the four fallen angels right here from the river Euphrates. And these people, they're going to unleash the eastern countries out over here. So then the eastern countries where you can think about these rogue nations. You got Muslim nation, communist nations. But in Asia, that would obviously include China. So then you got the rogue nations here. Why? Because the League of Nations right here, the United Nations right here under the Antichrist, they're going to be, have to, they're going to be having conflict with the other nations. So you see a full picture of a game over here of all the demoniac forces of what's going to happen. So you know what? So you know this. You know that at the New World Order system, it's going to be a crazy thing. You see all the bad guys at play. You think that the big bad guys were the Rothschilds? You think that the big bad guys were these elites, these celebrity stars, these bankers? And then you name all these other elites? No. It's a spiritual force behind it, which is far bigger than what you and I can picture. Here's one more thing that I would like to close with, which is very interesting. If we go by the interpretation that this New World Order kingdom is seven years, why would the Antichrist want it to be seven years? Because God's system of his kingdom went by what? Sevens. When he gave... Adam, his earthly kingdom, he finished it at day seven. Uh, the timing of the end times, as we go back through 6,000 past years of history, what is that? 7,000 years, right? Till we hit the millennium. Satan, he wants to imitate, always imitate God. And this is very interesting because if you look at Babylon, it's known as a kingdom that is on the what? Seven hills you want me to give you something else that's even more interesting in the middle of it he dies and buried and then he gets resurrected like some jesus christ at the middle of it oh, wow, yeah. and guess what jesus ministry is very similar how long three and a half years he imitates jesus christ that's Satan's kingdom. This is the mind of your enemy that he wants to build up at the end.